Hello Dry Online! Welcome to my workshop how to make anyone fight you with a longsword. In this workshop I want to show you the methods and concept I think most valuable to teach your spouse, flatmate or anyone willing to participate. We will focus on a playful approach to free play, using methods um, to strengthen your creativity and movement and self-efficacy. By this strange word, I mean that you will experience that you're probably already able to perform correct technique or make good decisions in free play just by trusting yourself and your own creativity. Behind me, you already see Chris and Reich doing what we call Freies Bewegen, which translates to free moving or better continuous movement, which is rule number one. Continuous movement means try to move with your sword and your whole body for one song. Um, rule number two is it's playtime. This means usually we would use our sword as a weapon. It is a weapon, we will use treat it as a weapon. Which means we don't put the tip to the floor uh, and we don't do weapon unlike stuff with it. During continuous movement we want to play, we want to experience other ways to hold the sword, we want to feel the sword, feel how it wants to move, etc. So it's good to break out, out of our common normal patterns and just play with it. What we can do when this works is we can give ourselves tasks. For example, I would give the task Please guys, use the sword as if the handle is hot. Okay? So this will force them to be creative how to use the sword. One thing could be that you want them to not grip too tough and then you realize, oh, they do something totally different, which is not a bad thing. It is very important that the trainees can experience their own creativity. Another task could be, guys, there are orcs everywhere and they are attacking you from every side. And you will have different patterns of movement. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah. To up your movement in general, I want to introduce you to the concept of comeliness. I found this in Roger Ascham's treatise on bow shooting, which is called Toxophilus, and was written roughly about 1500. Back to longsword! Most of you will be familiar with guards, which we find in different longsword traditions. Here are two tips how to make every single one of them better. First one is about angles and we want nearly 90 degree angles as much as we can. So for now, start with the feet, Christian, jump a bit, make so cozy, nice, beautiful angles. And also with the sword position, we will bring it in angles. Here, from Tag, or the Ox. And also here, we can go into 90 degree angles. And also here, we can bring nearly 90 degree angles. Look at the wrist, that it's not over. Yep. Or bone stacking, which means if you bring it forward, we will have here our bones aligned so that our whole body can support the move. And we can test those if Christian pushes. Or if he goes back, um, if I give pressure on him and he is able to resist. And when we put this together, Christian will transition from guard to guard, connecting it with movement. And already everything looks more calmly and tools will also be more effective in fencing.
I promised you free play, so we have to get into one-on-one -on -one business. As a first, I want to do with you the Klopfen, which would translate to knocking, but it doesn't really carry uh, the spirit of the method. So I will just explain it. While we do Klopfen, one partner will hit the other one with slowly increasing force. We will hit with full intention, but in the beginning slow and with less force. Increasing the force until our partner says stop. So it's very important that you talk to each other during this. And then we give two more of the same force for validation. While doing Klopfen it is really important that you don't look each other in the eyes. Because this can result in some kind of staring contest and you may overstep boundaries. So here it's important that you look at the target area and really concentrate, concentrate on training control, hitting the same spot over and over again, slowly increasing force. Another important thing is to um, hit different target areas, also very sensible, like I showed with the hands, kneecap, etc. etc. Do this slowly. Never has there anybody come to the hospital because he was too slow. Good. I like to do this exercise nearly always when I let people go into partner exercises. And I believe you can do this with just about any weapon. Um, Christian, stop! Not the manual. No! Another concept which will make every attack more powerful. We have the Drei Wunder, the three ways to attack your partner, and we have power generation. First, we will go with hitting, with howling. So it's Christian Hausen. And he can use the twisting movement of his whole body to put more power into it. And we can put on top, we can use gravity. So by going into the knees or making a falling step, we can even put more power into this move. Next. Next we have stabbing, thrusting, stechen. Here, we can use, for example, again, the twisting movement with more power into it. And you can put on top a wrenching movement, which will also transmit more power. Lastly, and mostly underrated, the slicing, cutting, the schneiden. Here again we can use gravity. Or wrenching movement. We arrived at our first free play simulation. It's called Stop and Go. And it's not really free play in the sense of fighting. In German, we would call it Connecten, uh, Kontakten, which would translate to connecting. Um, which means we are trying out different things, trying to get into contact, and creating as many different situations as possible. To to have time to think and let our creativity play its game, one partner will have the right to say stop and the other one will freeze in the movement. It probably won't be the exact situations you wanted to freeze, but that's okay because you have to learn to work into openings which open and are not already open. The opening which is open 
everybody can hit. It's anticipating what will be next. Just a small thing you also learn with this method. So, after we stop the situation, we freeze it, um, you have time to think of the best way to hit your partner and you will ask him for agreement, okay, if he's ready, and then execute your action. I think it's really important to work with full intention and to really get in contact, connect the sword to the body to learn to strike with intention. Also, later we have different options to make the method more complex. For example, Christian and Wright could do the counter after the initial attack. And counter, fabulous. Now things are getting real. We come to our next free play simulation, which is called counting, and it's better shown than explained. Are you ready, guys? Yes. And one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. As you can see, fencers are just able to move as long as I need to spell out the number. You can make this even more difficult if you, for example, shorten the time of the number. We will count only to five now. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Or for last round, if you make the break shorter. Again, are you ready, guys? One, two, three, four, five. Easy. As you can see, if you make the brakes shorter, it gets more and more into real free play. But still, fences have more time, they are bound to a third one who gives the tempo, which helps most to get into free play mode. Remember the communist concept of the beginning? We will now do a little exercise uh, to make everything look more martial and by this better. It's called the Figurenmacher, which means like somebody who models, models wax figurines. I will be uh, the one who gets a hot waxing, and Christian uh, will have all the fun. So, what? and I will pretend I'm made of wax, so I will re react with moving out of the palm's way, but after the hit and with resistance as if I'm made of wax. A fun person. Thank you. Very important here is that Chris again works with full intention and really tries to break my structure. Does it slow enough he can control his weapon? And if Chris hits, I will, I will react and it's good that my body learns, okay, if I get hit here it feels like this and that and my body would love to do this. So I will do this after I get hit so Christian can train but also my body already, already trains good movements for avoiding getting hit. Fun fact, most often it results in very good technique. So if I get a step here and I know I have to move my shoulder back, I already can go like this, and then it's an easy thing to just lift the blade and counter attack. Thank you. <laughs> My favorite free play simulation to get even the bloodiest greenhorn into fighting you with a longsword is playing chess, schach in German. 
During the shot, we go step by step, meaning first A will do a move, then B. You can adapt the speed uh, as you want, and so everybody can, can start playing freely with a sword with you. To up the game a little, um, Chris could uh, start moving already into the movement of Reich. So, when Reich's movement is ending, Chris is starting. So, we slowly get into a freer situation of playing. And as you can guess, this can end in slow sparring, where you don't have any regulation of this kind. If you want to play chess, it's very important that you understand the concept of the dome and of blade control. So, if I make my, my step and Christian wants to make his move, he has to make sure that at the end he has some kind, he endangers me in some way with his blade. So, if Chris just puts his blade in there without making uh, without making a bit wrong, I can easily move in my next and set in checkmate. So it's very important. Chris does a move which also endangers me. So that I, in turn, have to move instead of hitting directly. So, blade control. Tricky thing, but maybe three little tips to make this easier. First one is the one who holds the center between the two of you, if you just imagine here from chest to chest the center is the one having a, a good point to work from. So if I have the center, even if I have an overdrawn, this is a good point to be. So Christian with his moves wants to take the center. Fabulous. Next thing we can see here already is that the edge of the blade is in my flat, which is also always stronger. Edge and flat is another point where you can get the better of me. And also the third point is already visible. He is with his strong part of the blade in my weak, so he has all the advantages. <laughs> He has all the advantages over me he can get. So, quick and dirty concept of the dome and of edge control. Uh, blade control, I want to say. Damn it! Disclaimer. Your health is very dear to me. So, in our club we have three rules, which roughly translates to respect, caution and limits or boundaries, which means in short, please be respectful with each other, be cautious, if you do something for the first time, always think of it as a very dangerous thing, even if it looks very funny or harmless when we do it, and don't overstep each other's boundaries. So what we mostly like to do is at least wear some kind of eye protection, for example those um, glasses, googles, thank you. Uh, those are from Airsoft, you find them on eBay. Yeah, or a mask. Nothing uh, saves your eyes better than a mask. Secondly, I want to talk about sources. We do mostly um, um, Lichtenauer's long sword, and our main source is the Danzig and all the company sources from this area. But for the methods, I want to Especially thank Tore Wilkins from Brosfechter zu Chemnitz. Brosfechter Chemnitz. Hi Tore. Um, who did a great job not only translating methods but also adapting them and adding to them, um, which we use today and adapted them to, to our needs. And many of his, um, many of those methods go also back to Rory Miller. Uh, who is a self-defense specialist from the United States, 
Also here my hi and shout out to Ronella who does a great job um, making our training more safe and more realistic.